Hello everyone and welcome to your grade 11 English lessons. Last lessons we looked at cameras, the uses of cameras and some of the features that cameras have. We also looked at a lot of vocabulary items. We looked at the passive, we looked at the prepositions of time and place, we looked at a descriptive essay and how to write a descriptive essay and we looked at the translation and how to translate from Arabic into English. It's a lot, right? I suggest you go back and you look at those episodes because believe me, you are going to benefit from it a lot. This episode, we're going to look at a few more vocabulary items, the reading comprehension and the summary. Are you ready? Let's go. Same as before, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a picture with the words right under that. And what I want you to do is to tell me what is the word that best corresponds to the picture? Are you ready? Yes? No? Well, we're starting. Go ahead. So we have a car, back sensors, front sensors. So what are the sensors? The sensors, they are features of the car. A feature or the word feature is a noun and what it is is that it is a distinctive attribute in something. So it is something that you can, if you see it, you can tell that it belongs to this thing. So it is a special feature for it or it is a feature of that. For example, the feature of humans is the brain and the ability to think. This is a feature, right? The example, there are front and back sensors in the car. This is an excellent safety feature. Okay, let's look at the other word. So we have a bunch of, I'm not going to say the word because if I do say the word, then I'm going to give you the answer. Did you get it? I bet you did because everyone uses it. They are screens. Screen is a noun and it is a device used to display images and videos. I am pretty sure that you are watching this video through maybe your mobile phone or maybe a television screen or the laptop. Either one uses a screen, so you are watching me through a screen. The example, the TV screen you bought is amazing. The images are very clear. Okay, so let's look at the other word. So we have a guy who has like a, a, a very big speaker like thing, cone speaker. I think you can tell from the hat. The hat is a very distinctive feature of this person. <laughs> Did you get it? It is producer, of course. Producer is a noun. A producer is a person who is responsible for all aspects of making a movie. So for example, Steven Spielberg is a very famous motion picture producer. Did you get that one? It was pretty easy, right? Let's look at the other one. So you have lights pointing at a specific spot. So when the lights point at something, like it is pointing at me right now, <laughs> I am on the, or I am in the, Spotlight, very good. So spotlight is a noun. It is a lamp which projects a narrow, intense beam of light onto a place or a person. You can stand, look at the example, you can stand under the spotlight so that the people can see you better. Okay, so usually singers or actors and, 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 and you know on the theater or something, they usually stand under spotlights. Yeah, let's look at this picture. This is the second to last picture. So it's going in every direction. So when, thing, when something goes in every direction, what is it doing? Or what is it? It is sprawling, very good. So sprawling is an adjective. It is spreading out in different directions. That's pretty much it. So sprawling means to spread out, okay? So the example is the sprawling houses. The sprawling houses. So the houses are 
crawling in every direction. They are covering a large area of the land. They are sprawling everywhere. Okay, let's look at the last picture. This is one of my favorite actors and comedians. Did you get it? Yes? No? Well, of course, it's the only word that is left, which is voiceover, and it is a noun. A voiceover is a piece of narration in a movie or broadcast that is, uh, you know, it is not accompanied by an image of the speaker. So what happens is usually in movies, especially in cartoons and in animations, they have these cartoons that speak, right? The cartoons, of course, are not speaking. They are voiceovers of actors who are speaking for them. Okay, so for example, the actor was chosen to do the voiceover for the character in the animation. Did you get these? Yes? No? Okay, I'm sure you did. So, let's go into the reading comprehension. Now, the reading comprehension is where some students find it difficult. But I'm pretty sure that with practice and perseverance, you can get the grades of the reading comprehension. So, with the reading comprehension, what I suggest that you do is you read the questions first before reading the passage. You are not reading for entertainment here, right? You are reading because you want to answer questions. So, it is very good to know what the questions are first before reading the passage. That way, when you go to read the passage, you can remember key words in that question and say, ah, I've read this in the question before. So you can underline that, okay? Then what you do is you read the passage carefully and thoroughly, okay? Then what I want you to do is to try to understand the meanings of the difficult words through the context. It is not possible, probably, to know every meaning of every word. But what you can do is try to guess the meaning from the context it is surrounded by. So look, you know, if, if you have a difficult word, look a few sentences before. Look two or three sentences before. I'm sure you'll be able to get the meaning, okay? While reading the questions, okay, pay attention to the keywords such as best title, synonym, antonym, refer to. I'm going to talk about each one of these uh, later on. Repeat the questions as if you are explaining it to someone. So in your head, repeat the question to yourself. Imagine you are trying to explain this question to someone who is right in front of you. How would you explain it to make it easier for them? If you are able to make it easier for them, then you are able to make it easier for yourself. Okay? Take your time while reading the choices given to you. So don't go straight ahead and answer the question just because the keyword is in it. Make sure you read every answer and understand every answer very well, okay? The types of questions that come in reading comprehension are two types. We have multiple choice questions and productive questions. For the multiple choice questions, usually you have best title or, best, or, or the main idea. So what is the best title for the passage? What is the main idea of the passage? Then you have questions about vocabulary. You have synonyms, which are the closest meaning to. So for example, large means big. So this is a synonym for the word large. Antonyms are the opposite of meanings. So for example, the antonym of the word short is tall. Very good, excellent. And also you have definitions, which is the actual meaning of the word. Not something close to it, not something opposite it, the actual meaning, okay? Then you also have word reference. So what word reference is, that they will give you a word and they will ask you, what does this word refer to? So for example, I can say, computers are amazing. They are very complex. The word they, what does it go back to? It goes back to the computer. So this is what it refers to. Number four, are locating information. So here I'm going to ask you a question, a direct question, and I want you to locate that information, okay? To tell me where it is exactly and give me that information. The last question that you may have are the true or false uh, uh, information questions. So what they're going to say is, 
All of these statements are true except. So here you're looking for the false information. Or it might be the opposite. All of these statements are false except. So here you're looking for the true statement. Now let's look at some of the productive questions. The productive questions are two types. Explicit questions and implicit questions. An explicit question is a question that the answer is directly mentioned in the text. You are going to find the answer in the reading passage if you read it well. Implicit questions, mm, you're not going to find it in the text. What you need to do is understand the text. Then you will be able to answer that implicit question. Let's look at a few examples. So what I want you to do, if you can, is just to screenshot this uh, slide right in front of you so you're able to read it at your own pace. I'm going to read it now for you very um, uh, uh, thoroughly. Many health experts call the problem of kids not spending enough time outdoors nature deficit disorder. Scientific studies support the claim that a nature deficit can harm the mind and the body. And some health experts have started calling green time vitamin G. Kids who don't get outdoors much are more likely to have attention deficit hyperactivity disorder or what is it named as ADHD and depression. They also tend to have trouble in school. Doctors believe that it is because uh, that uh, going outdoors stimulates the mind more than sitting indoors. Even those who usually spend a lot of time outdoors notice a difference when they don't get green time. The other paragraph also, capture it, read it at your own pace. The United States government launched the America's Great Outdoors and Youth in the Great Outdoors programs, so it's two programs, to help make more outdoor spaces and activities safe and accessible to all. The programs are encouraging people to try uh, fun outdoor activities such as hiking and swimming and parks, beaches, forests and farms. According to America's Great Outdoors, Americans report better health, greater happiness and more quality family time when they get more green time. Let's look at the questions. So question number one, the purpose of the passage is to convince the reader of. So the purpose of the passage is the main idea, it is the aim of this passage. What is the aim of this passage? Is it the effects of playing video games? Is it the need to have more fun with kids? Is it the benefits of staying home or is it the importance of playing outdoors. It's pretty easy. If you read the text well, you are going to know that the answer is in fact D, the importance of playing outdoors. Let's look at question number two. The underlined word stimulate. So in paragraph one, the underlined word stimulate means, so it wants the meaning. Okay, so I want the meaning of the word. It means to stop something from working, or to encourage something to happen, or to decrease something's energy, or to make something sleepy. So to stimulate. Did you get the answer? You can use, well, right now, you can use a dictionary to know. Or you can, what you can do is go back to the passage and try to deduce the meaning from the context around you. Did you get the answer? It's B, very good, encourage something, to happen. Let's look at question number three. The underlined word they in paragraph number two. So in paragraph number two, there, there's the word they. What does it refer to? Or who does it refer to? Is it referring to the Americans? Is it referring to programs? Is it referring to forests? Or is it referring to farms? So what I want you to do is go back to the text. Look at the word they. Who's they? Who is they? Ask yourself this question. Who's they? Did you get the answer? It is the Americans, of course. Very good. Let's look at question number four. According to paragraph two, 
So this question is directly um, uh, uh, stated for paragraph number two. What will happen when you go outdoors? What will happen when you go outdoors? Will you feel more tired? Or will you feel less happy? Will you be healthier? Or will you have more stress? It's pretty easy. So what will happen when you go outdoors? You will be healthier. Very good. Let's look at question number five. And this is the one that I told you to, to, to understand very well. According to paragraph one, all of these questions or all of these statements and answers are true, except here I am looking for the false answer. Is it inactivity stimulates the brain more than being active? Green time is referred to as vitamin G. Uh, G. ADHD may be caused by not going outdoors often. Being outdoors stimulates our brains. So I want the false answer, the wrong answer. Did you get it? It is A, very good. Inactivity stimulates the brain more than being active. Now let's look at the productive questions. Why did the United States government launch the America's Great Outdoors and the Youth in the Great Outdoors program? Go back to the text and you will find that the answer is the United States government launched the two programs to help make more outdoor spaces and activities safe and accessible to all. Let's look at question number two. What is vitamin G? Go back to the passage and look at vitamin G. What is it? It is the time you spend outdoors. Very good. Let's look at question number three. Why is it important to get vitamin G? Same thing. Go back to the text. Why is it important to get vitamin G? It is important to prevent harm to the mind and the body. Let's look at question number four. How has the America's Great Outdoors program affected the people? Go back to the essay or go back to the reading passage and see how did it affect the people. Was it a negative effect or a positive effect? People report becoming healthier and happier. Excellent job, very good. Now let's look at the summary. When you're looking at the summary, you have a passage, okay? And you have a question. What I want you to do is to answer that question using four of the answers given to you in the reading passage. So I want you to understand the questions properly. I want you to understand the paragraph properly. There are usually five answers, so you can underline four, okay? Then you can join these answers with words like first, firstly, second, third, finally, also, moreover, in addition. These words are all used to join these, um, uh, uh, these sentences. So I'm looking for the content and relevance of ideas. Summarize according to the passage. Don't get me stuff from outside the passage. Even if it's right, I will, it will still be accepted as wrong. Paraphrase as much as you can. Spelling and grammar, make sure that it is correct. And the format, do not write in bullet point format. I want it in a paragraph format. Okay, so let's look at this summary right there. One of the best ways not to lose the sense of direction is to know where the direction is. There are north, south, east, and west. You can do this by looking at the sun. Another way of not losing your sense of direction is to look at the famous landmarks and the places around you. Uh, people can also look at maps before heading outside. This will allow them to visualize before going out. Another good way is to make different paths of the same destination. This will allow you to make mental connections. I want you to answer this question. How can a person not lose their sense of direction? There are five answers. What are they? The first one is to know your directions. You know the south, the west, the, uh, the east, and the north. Okay. The second one is to look at the famous landmarks around you. This is number two. Number three, I want you to look at the map before you go out. And number four, to take different paths. Look at what we're doing here. So this is the first answer. Look at how I changed it. First, people should know where the north, south, east, and west. Second, memorize. Also, people can memorize the famous landmarks. Number three, moreover, people can use maps. And number four, finally, take different paths to the same location. As you can see in front of you, this is the paragraph that I would like you to have. Screenshot it. And in the end, what I want to say is that we've looked at cameras, we've looked at reading comprehension, we've looked at the writing, we've looked at summary making, we've looked at the vocabulary. Go over these episodes more than once, and we will see you next time. <laughs>